Father Vieo. May I disturb your meditation? Certainly, Mother Lucretia. Our Lolita is leaving us within the hour. Yes, I know, good mother. Seems ironical. She should have chosen to teach school on an Indian reservation. Perhaps it is God's will. She has Indian blood in her, you know. Do you intend to tell her that her mother was Ramona? No, good mother, I dared not, because some person might remember that Ramona was part Indian and subject Lolita to unnecessary humiliation. Heaven forbid. Here she comes. I'm going to leave you alone with her father. Good morning, father. Good morning, my child. Father, when I think of going away, I, I become so terribly frightened. Why should you be frightened? Are you afraid you might fail to be a good teacher? No, father. It's because I'll be leaving you and Mother Lucretia. But you'll only be leaving us for a little while to bring enlightenment to the Indian children and through them to their parents. Yes, father. Bless you, my child. Your mother would have been proud of you. You were my mother's dearest friend, weren't you? Yes. That's why she sent you to me. This cross was hers. She asked that I give it to you whenever you began to face life on your own. I'll wear it always. Teresa has sighted the coach on the hilltop. Goodbye, Father. Bless you, my child. Goodbye, my little Goodbye, Lucy. I won't, Sister Teresa. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are you sure this is the right place? Closest I come to the reservation. Was there someone to meet you, miss? I hope so. Guess they're late. I hope Fort Defiance isn't like this. Say, uh, since you're going there, you take this package in with you? 
name's on it. Certainly. Thank you, miss. All aboard. glad you came. Warm, isn't it? You'll get used to it, miss. Uh, these are my trunks. They are? Yes. Pardon me, miss, but uh, was someone supposed to meet you? Why, certainly. I'm going to the reservation. Weren't you to come for me? No, miss, I'm sorry. I came for this package. Oh. Well, then, you'll see that it gets to its right owner. Yes, of course. I'll be glad to give you a lift. That is, if you don't mind riding in the wagon. Thank you. I'll be glad to pay you anything. That won't be necessary. Fort Defiance from Carlisle Indian School, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Carlisle, how interesting. Do you know Novel White Eagle? Yes. I'd like to meet him. Why? Well, you see, I'm a school teacher and we might have something in common. Oh, I'm sure we... I'm sure you would. Do you mind? against the law. But that's to be delivered to Novel White Eagle. It was. Oh, then, then you're... Novel White Eagle. I'm a Navajo. I just returned from Carlisle yesterday. Well, you're one Navajo I won't have to teach, Mr. White Eagle. Uh, for your information, miss, it's a tribal custom to call everyone but the chiefs by their given names. Oh, all right, Novel. And I'm Lolita, Lolita Moreno. You brought a bride to the reservation. <laughs> no, this is Miss Moreno, the new school teacher. Lolita, this is Mr. and Mrs. Beggs, who run the trading post. How to do? My dear, I'm simply delighted to meet you. And I thought that you were an Indian. You'll forgive me, won't you? There's nothing to forgive. I have much respect for the Indians. Well, so do we. But most white girls object to living in dirt houses and being called a squaw. Oh, no offense to Navo. He's different. He's an educated Indian. Where shall I put Miss Moreno's trunks? Put them in the spare room, please. Oh, Novo, 
Would you also bring in those bolts of yardage you picked up for us? Yes, ma'am. Won't you come in, my dear? Someday when you have time, Navo, I'd like you to show me around the reservation. Yes, Lolita. Big. Very good. I'll take that one. Yes, Mr. Connors. Oh, Mr. Connors, this is Miss Moreno, the new teacher you engaged. Mr. Connors is in charge of the Indian Agency. The pleasure is mine, Miss Moreno. The Navajos can consider themselves fortunate in getting such a charming school mark. Thank you, sir. I shall try very hard to please everyone. I'm sure you will. I'm sorry, we thought you were coming tomorrow. I could have spared you such a long, hot ride with only an Indian for company. On the contrary, I enjoyed every moment of the ride. Especially Navo's interesting tales of the government school at Carlisle. I've heard so much about his accomplishments. I met him for just a moment yesterday. You see, I was appointed agent here while he was away at school. I'm sure you'll find him worthy of respect. Now, if uh, you'll excuse me, please. Why, certainly. Come, my dear. Pretty little filly, eh? Yes, sir. <laughs> and curved in the right places, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Navo. Morning, Mr. Connors. Sorry we couldn't have more of a powwow yesterday. You must spend an evening with me soon and advise me how to improve conditions for your people. It'll be a pleasure to help you in every way I can. Thank you. Kima. You changed since Navo come home. I haven't seen Navo. But you will. He's been too busy to see Okima. Good. You belong Yuba. <laughs> Yuba show you. As soon as I finish up with Connors, I come back for you. My little brother. And how's our mother, huh? Oh, very happy since you come home. I can run errand for her now. They say new white girl here. And very pretty. What does white girl want an Indian reservation? Well, she's to be your school teacher. Panka not going to school anymore. Oh, yes, you are. So that when you grow up, you'll have a chance to go to Carlisle, too. Panka make up his mind when he see teacher. <laughs> All right, run along. And don't be long. Panka run fast like antelope. Go on. <laughs> Aaron, then home. Navo back? Yes. Wait. Rustic Bridge? Tell Navo meet me there right away. Maybe. And don't you forget. My big, brave son. Me see you make good trip. Yes. I also talked again with Mr. Connors, the new Indian agent. You think him good man? I hope so. You talk your plan with him? Not yet, but I'm going to. You see Okima? No, I've been too busy to see Chief Wycombe's daughter. You were not too busy. What oh, take <laughs> Well, I think I better feed the horses.
So you see, with Mr. Connor's help, we can someday enjoy our reservation. White Eagle, your father be proud of you. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a new school teacher on the reservation. So? Very well educated. And pretty? Mm, beautiful. What her name? Lolita. Lolita Marino. White girl. Be careful. You sit with Chief White Comas in council tomorrow. You rest now. Navo can't rest yet, Mother. Why? Because Okima wait for him at Rustic Bridge. She just told me to tell him. Well, I better not keep our Chief's daughter waiting. No. She can make much trouble. She been meeting you about Bridge. Ponka. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. I won't be long. friend has grown in the last year. And I've learned some of the things white folks do. I've been wondering what it would be like to kiss you. And, uh, have you found out? Yes. It was very nice. And I want to do it again. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Kissing isn't just a game, you know, to be played for fun. Hello, Yupa. So, Indian of much learning back on reservation. If you think white man way better than our, why not you stay there? My place is here. You go away before you get in trouble. Trouble? How? Okima, my woman now. Ah, you're drunk. That lie. Are you bringing whiskey on the reservation again? That's none your business. I'll make it my business if you don't stop breaking federal law. Ah, uh, I thought it was somebody instead of a stinking engine. What's the matter with you? Tongue tied? No. Well, you can do something besides grunt. I've got more sense than to get drunk like a white miner. What makes you think I'm a miner? That pick and shovel on the pack burrow outside. They're yours, aren't they? Yeah. My boy. Hey. Come here, engine, and pull off my boots. Pull off your own boots. I told you. Pull off my boots! I'll teach you to respect a white man. Now, come here, engine. Maybe you don't know it, mister. 
The striking an Indian on a reservation is a federal offense. What's been going on here, Navo? He hit me with his whip because I wouldn't pull his boots off. But I guess he had one too many. The crazy fool. I'm sorry, Navo. He must have gotten into my medical supply while I was out. Well, sorry, Mr. Connors, it wasn't your fault. I know, I know, but he's my guest. He had no right to take advantage of my friendship. He's a good enough sort when he's sober. Will you leave us alone, Navo? I want to talk to Mr. Morgan. Sure, Mr. Connors. Welcome back to the reservation, Mr. Morgan. What happened? What happened? You would get into a fight the first day you get back. I'll kill an engine. And get us both thrown out of Arizona Territory? You'll be a nice boy or we're part and company. Well, I thought you were a friend of mine. I am, but I'm not letting friendship spoil my future. You'd no right to whip him. First chance you get, you make it up to him, see? All right. Give me another drink so I can pull myself together. How do you look? Well, Indian Council soon make Navo spokesman for a tribe. Yeah? How do you know? Okima at trading post tell me. What else did you find out? Hello, Navo. Good morning, Lolita. What's the matter with your arm? Nothing, just a little bruise. Let me see it. Just a little bruise. You better let me take care of it. Very well, nurse. That'll be all, Yuba. Now then. Did you find that copper load I told you about? Did I? Where do you see the ore samples I brought back? Go on. Open it. <whistles> Why, there's enough copper in this reservation to make us both rich. We've got to play our cards carefully. Meaning? From now on, I don't do any more drinking on the reservation. Right. Now, let's take a look at this map. I figure the principal copper vein extends from about here, about there. Yeah. That's a strip 20 miles long, about five miles wide. Why, it'll take a hundred years to get that much copper out of the ground. Yeah, but... How do we go about getting it? I'm going to check the records and find out which Indians own those precious acres. And then? We take whatever steps are necessary to get title to them. After that, we sell out to a big New York mining syndicate. No. Oh, here's a pretty one. And Mr. Connors couldn't have been more understanding. He allowed me everything I asked for the school. That was nice of him. Who was pretty white girl with Navo? She's Lolita Moreno, the new school teacher. While I was at the government school, Chief Wycomus, I learned why the white man is our superior. It's because he is educated. He knows how to take a small stream of water and carry it for miles to, to barren lands like ours so that food will grow. He can make machines to thresh the grain. The hope of our people is education and progress. If we want our white brothers to live up to their promises, we must win their trust and respect.
the Navajo tribe must no longer depend on charity. Your words wise, Navajo. But how much you do without help of Indian agent? Very little. But I've already met Agent Connors, and he wants to talk to me about what to do and the best way to do it. If he fail us? Then with your permission, I shall go to Washington. Good. Navo, White Eagle, it is will of council. You be made member and spokesman for our people. I am honored, Chief Wycombes, and I pledge my life to the betterment of our people. Spirit, our tribe will harvest lemons and other fruit trees, which are food and medicine. Good medicine? Yes, good medicine. Fruit juices will help prevent blindness among our people. Mr. Connors. My first name is Ralph. That's the right place for us. All right, Lolita. Hello, Lolita. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize you were busy. Oh, no, Navo. Mr. Connors was just helping me hang some pictures. Howdy, Navo. Hello, Mr. Connors. I saved a few trees for the schoolyard. Will you show me where you like them planted? I'd love to. Excuse me, Mr. Connors. Certainly. Navo, this is a wonderful idea. But how will you water them? I'll carry water to them, the same as we did these other shrubs, until I can include the school grounds in our irrigation system. Then we'll be able to... Why, Mother? No. L Lolita, this is my mother, Watika. Uh, this is Lolita Moreno. I'm very happy to meet you. Navo speak much of you and your good work. Thank you. My mother does beautiful weaving. Won't you come see it sometime? I'd love to. And my brother, Punka, he draws also. Eh, hey, Mother? Why you not come eat some night? I'd be delighted. You come soon, huh? No be late, Navo. I won't, Mother. Your mother's nice. Thank you, Lolita. Well, where would you like them planted? Mm. Over there. All right. I've read this Navajo Treaty three times now, and there's nothing in here that says an Indian can't sell his land allotment, except if he's underage. Good. Now, I'll give you the legal description of the land, and you can tell me who owns the title to our copper. With the greatest of pleasure, my friend. Ready? The north half of section five. 
North half of section five is covered by allotment number 1042 and is recorded in the name of Opima, daughter of Chief Wycomus. Looks to me like you've been caught in the wrong female. <laughs> oh, no. But watch me start courting the engine gal for a copper. Now, don't get careless, Mr. Romeo. I'll be careful, Jeb. I'll play one against the other. Hmm? Okima's stuck on Navo, isn't she? Yeah. And he's making calf eyes at Lolita. Catch on? Oh. Huh. oh. Hide these papers. Hello, Navo. Come in. Thanks, sir. If you're not too busy, there's something I'd like to discuss with you. Never too busy to talk to you, my friend. Come on in here. Thanks. Howdy, Navo. Hello, Mr. Morgan. Say, Ralph and I are out this afternoon looking at the crops. We've never seen any better. Well, thanks to Mr. Connors for getting me the kind of seed I requested. Uh, the credit's all yours, Navo, for reclaiming those badlands. Pull up a chair and tell me what's on your mind. Well, as you know, my biggest dream is to make my people self-supporting. But I'm afraid you can't make a <laughs> farmers out of a race of hunters. Because not every Indian will take to farming. You're quite right, Navo. And I suppose you figured out a way to do it, huh? <laughs> no, sir, not me. The way was provided by the Great Spirit millions of years ago. While at Carlisle, they taught me how to study soil and rock formations. You mean you studied mineralogy? Oh, just some of the fundamentals, which were included in our geology course. But enough to know that the Navajo Mountains are full of copper. Is that so? They don't say. Of course, I only made a rough survey. But I'm confident that with proper development, there'll be independence and security for Navajos for years to come. Well, uh, of course, it'll take millions to develop mines, but, uh, but fortunately for all concerned, I have several good connections with one of the finest financial institutions on Wall Street. And, uh, and we can operate through the Department of the Interior so that everything will be above board. I knew I could depend upon you, Mr. Connors, and I'm sure my people will be more than grateful. However, it might be a good idea, Navo, to keep this quiet until our plans are fully developed. Well, that makes sense. Well, good night, Mr. Morgan. Good night, Malvo. Well, good night, Mr. Connors, and thanks again. Good night, Malvo. I never did think it was such a smart idea to educate the Indians. You don't think I'm going to let one Indian cheat us out of that copper, do you? No. You got to get rid of him before it's too late. Right. But no violence. Except as a last resort. why you've been a stranger to Okima. I've been very busy working so that there'll be food for our people this winter. What will you do after the harvest? Then I'll go into the mountains and work for our tribe. Okima wonders when you will build Hogan for us. Patience has always been a virtue of the Navajo women, but not with Okima. Do you say that because you're in love with white school teacher? That's not true. Education has made a fool of Navajo. White girl won't live in Indian Hogan. I'll never ask you to. But that is what you dream. For shame, Navajo. Your dreams are no longer the dreams of a Navajo.
Don't go, Kima. I want to talk to you. What do you want to talk about? About you. Me? Yes. The daughter of a big chief shouldn't be sad because an Indian youth is too blind to see how lovely she is. Lovely? I think you're beautiful. Do you mean what you say? Come to my office tonight and see the present I bought for you. What did you buy for me? Oh, no, no. You'll have to come and see for yourself. You are fooling me. Am I? Okima's present? Oh, yes. First, I want to show you something. See that? Mm-hmm. What does it say? That says United States Indian Service. Now, watch this. See that? Mm-hmm. That says Ralph Connors. Every time I make my thumbprint. I'll show you how to say Okima. That's it. Now try it again. That's the way. Once more. Now, see if you can do it. Okima. That's right. Okima. Now then. Okima. Close your eyes and don't open them until I tell you to look. Now you can look. Prettiest necklace Okima's ever seen. Okima thanks you very much. Okima. Okima. No, thank you. The dinner was delicious. It was so nice of you to invite me. Glad you come. <laughs> if you think this was good, wait until the harvest. Hey, eh, Mother? Yes, and school will be out then. Yes, and you'll be working in the field. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Mother? Doesn't like you to be afraid of a little lightning and thunder? What, he cannot afraid? Me feel evil spirit. Me feel evil spirit long time now. Last night, blood on moon. It might rain. I, I think I'd better cover the farm equipment. Excuse me. Come on, Papa. Anka. Oh, sure. That pretty cross. It was my mother's. She and my father died when I was a baby. I was brought up at the Mission Capistrano. Long time ago. Me see same cross like this. San Diego Mission, California. A pretty girl, eyes blue, just married. My mother and father were married at the Mission San Diego, and she had blue eyes. Do you suppose it was them you saw? Me not know. He called her Mahela. Mahela was my mother's name. Tell me everything you know about her, please. I know only that... That she was beautiful, modest, gracious, kind. And that my father was a Spaniard, a handsome Spaniard. Your father's name Moreno, eh? Yes. Then, 
me not see your mother. But, but you seem so sure at first. What made you change your mind? Girl, I see Mary in you. Oh. During the harvest, I shall go see Father Vallejo. Look, Ralph, I'm getting tired of laying around and waiting and waiting. What are you going to do now? You're not a very patient man, Jeb. Yeah, but... Well, Narvo, congratulations. You're doing a fine job with the harvest. Thanks. But I sure wish we could get that new farm equipment from Fort Defiance. Can the Indian agency afford it? I don't know, Narvo. We certainly need it, Mr. Connors. I know you do. But we've used up most of our funds. I... All right, Narvo. I'll get the papers ready and you can leave right away. That's fine. I'll see you in the office. What's the idea? Well, he's gone, we'll arrange for a harvest festival. And while the Indians are having their powwow... We'll help them celebrate. Father Vallejo, what sort of a person was my mother? One of the finest and noblest women I've ever known. You told me her name was Mahela, didn't you? That is what your stepfather called her. But that wasn't a real given name, was it? No. Her real name was Ramona. Why did you conceal the truth from me? Only because I loved you and wanted to protect you. Protect me from what? Was there something shameful about the union of my parents? No, 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 my child. It was perfect. But it ended in tragedy. Because your father was an Indian. That was why I never told you your mother was Ramona, because she was part Indian, too. Oh, Father, I'm so happy. God's will be done. for some farm equipment. I did, but I didn't expect him back until later. Get the wagon. As soon as it gets dark, take these chiefs out of here. And don't leave any bottles around. This is the last one, Jeb. You take over. I've got to go and welcome Navo. Right. Put these land title transfers back in the safe.
responsible for all this. Why, I am. I arranged it in your honor. We have invited some of the neighboring tribes. I know you meant well, Mr. Connors, but don't you realize you'll undo everything I've worked months to accomplish? I don't understand. Indians are like children. They'd so much rather play than work. Navo is an educated Indian, Mr. Connors. But you can't change centuries of Navajo culture with a store shirt and corduroy trousers. I'm aware of that fact. You seem to be delaying the powwow. I, I'm supposed to make a speech about you. Go ahead, but please make it short. Friends and Navajos, the Navajo tribe is giving this powwow to honor you, Navo, for the bountiful harvest you've made possible with your knowledge. And on behalf of the Indian Bureau in Washington, I want to compliment you for the fine work you've done. Thank you, sir. Hello, Navo. Hello, Lolita. You should be very happy. Should I? What's the matter? Don't you like my costume? Don't you think there are enough Indians on the reservation without you masquerading as one? But I'm not masquerading. You see, I... Come, Marvel, Hotchkiss is gonna sing. Come on, Lee, come The orb on the moon was shining brightly through the willow tree. The orb on the moon had promised it would bring my love to me. I'm hoping that when I see it through the willow tree, the autumn moon will bring my love. Now, now, come quick. You just got Chief's trunk and putting them in wagon. Where did you see this? Back in Mr. Connor's office. Excuse me, Lolita. What's wrong? You wait here. I'll tell you later. Where are you going, Yuba? Put the wagon away. Where are you taking the chiefs? You choked me! What's going on here? Look in the wagon, Mr. Connors. I'd like to know where he was taking the chiefs. He wouldn't tell me. Well, he'll tell me or he'll rot in the reservation jail. Parker, take the chiefs to their home. Yes, Navo. I'm not blaming you, but I gotta make it look that way. Understand? Yeah. Now, where were you taking the chiefs? To Hogan's. I want the truth. I tell truth. No, you don't. But maybe you will after you've spent some time in jail. Morgan. Yeah. Here's the key. Lock him up. Then come back to my office. Get going. I'll take care of this, Navo. Thanks, Mr. Connors. So I'm really not blaming you, Bert. I'm sure he was acting under somebody's orders. You don't mean Mr. Connors. Yeah, I hate to think so. Could be Morgan. You'll be careful, won't you? Connors wants you to ride to Fort Defiance and stay there till he gets rid of Navo. Good.
find out. I did exactly as you told me. That should do it, all right. Yuba! Couldn't make him talk, so you shot him, huh? I didn't kill him. He couldn't because he was with me. Yes, he did. Kima. I saw him. That's not true and you know it. It is true. And I hope you're punished by the white man's law. She's right. I saw him too. Under the circumstances, Navo, I'm afraid I'll have to arrest you. Come along. I brought you something. Thanks, I'm not hungry. Maybe you'll eat it later. Maybe. You're tired. You didn't sleep last night, did you? Neither did I. Lolita, I can't understand it. You mean Okima? Oh, no, not Okima. I can understand how she's jealous. But Morgan... Could it be because you once had a fight? No, there's more to it than that. Even Connors has turned against me. You're the only white friend I have left. Then, Navo, I'm afraid you have no white friends. What do you mean? Remember when I went to see Father Vallejo? Well, he finally told me my real ancestry. I'm an Indian, too. Please, be patient. Have faith. Everything's going to be all right. I'll be back. Council wish he be tried Indian law. Well, it's not the usual procedure, Chief Wycomus. However, as Indian agent of this reservation, I'll make an exception in this case and turn him over to you. Because I know you'll be just. Indian Council, always just. I thought you were turning Navo over to a military court. A court martial would never be able to prove that Navo carried a gun. That was my mistake, Jeb. I should have told you to use a knife. Then we won't be rid of him. Sure we will. The tribal court will banish him from the reservation. Council say you be banished from reservation, from all Navajo, all time. Our people never see Navajo. If you want talk, council listen. Since I can't produce proof of my innocence, I demand my right under tribal law to be tried by fire. Waukee! You mean test of courage? Yes.
Yataba. Make fire pit. Chief White Comus, I beg you, don't let Navo go through this terrible trial. This tribal law. But I tell you, he's innocent. We find out. Don't you realize what Navo has done for his people? If it weren't for him, your children would be hungry and sick. You're old and young dying. You must understand. Navo couldn't have killed Yuba. He was with me when the shots were fired. School teacher love, not save Navo. Can't you see? Morgan was lying. I'm telling you the truth. I swear I am. Okima say Navo shoot Yuba. Panka. Now remember, don't tell anyone where I'm going. Panka, be still like Turtle. And take good care of Navo. Well, goodbye. Bye. That Indian council handled novel. How do you mean? Biggs told me the council found him innocent. How could they? The evidence was all against him. He demanded the test by fire. And walked through the fire pit? He did. Well, novel swears he's going to find you this killer and make him confess. He's liable to spoil everything for us now. Ah, don't worry. If he gives us any trouble, you can fix him like you did Yuba. I should have fixed him instead of you. You can take care of him after I've gone to New York. Still figuring to take Lolita with you? Sure. I'll get the Padre in Fort Defiance to marry us. Well, what about the pretty little uh, Indian girl? Okina. To show you what a good friend I am, I'll give her to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
came. What came of what wrong? I have sinned against my father, my people, and Navo. Navo? Yes. I lied about seeing him shoot Jupa because I was... I was jealous of Lolita. It's my fault he had to walk through fire. How oh, your fault? I'm about to disgrace our people. How? Oh. Mr. Connors is... It's going to marry Lolita and take her away from reservation. So? He said he would marry Okima and she will soon bear him. Okima. <laughs> I was outside and couldn't help overhearing. I'm partly to blame. I drove you into Connor's arms by my... my dream of marrying Lolita. So tomorrow you and I will be married. No, no, Navo. I won't let you win. When you're in love with her. Then I shall tell your father, and we will abide by his decision. Give me till tomorrow to decide. Please, Navo. All right, Akima. You can give me your answer at sundown. Nabo. Watika. Proud. You. Colonel Harlow, there's really something wrong. You've got to stop Mr. Connors and Morgan from whatever evil they have planned. Captain O'Hara, take your men and pick up Ralph Connors and Deb Morgan and bring them in for investigation. And have Navo and Chief Wycombus and his chiefs in as witnesses. Yes, sir. I suggest, Miss Moreno, that after your long ride, you remain here in Fort Defiance. I'm sure Mrs. Harlow would be pleased to have you with us. Thank you, Colonel Harlow. Bravo! Bravo! Indian girl, jump off cliff. Where? Above, rustic bridge. Oh. Oh, Yahweh. But if it is, then Connor's killed her, even though he was miles away. No time for revenge. Time for sorrow. You're right, Mother. What are those Indian women doing? Looks like they're preparing for a burial. Right across the road from my office. I know it's against the law for them to raise their dead on a reservation compound, but Looks to me like that's what they're doing. Well, I'm going to put a stop to it. Uh, uh, wait a minute. What's that coming over there?
know Chief Wycomus better than I do. Tell them they have to bury their dead away from the compound. Yes, Mr. Collins. Chief Wycomus. I bring you a message from Mr. Connors. What he say? You can't raise a body on the compound. It's forbidden. You know that. I'll talk to Connors. Chief Wycomus wishes to raise the body of his daughter, Okima, on the compound. Okima? Yes. She's dead. Found this morning at the bottom of a cliff. But why does Chief Icomus want to bury her over there? Because he knows that you're responsible for her death. years the Navajos have starved and wandered from place to place. The white man's law has taught us how to cultivate the land and have given us schools for our children. Are we going to give up all this for the wrongs of two white men? Much what Navajo say true, but Okima dead. Wycomus? Wycomus, listen. Colonel Harlow sent me to get Mr. Connors and Morgan for investigation. He requests that you, your chiefs, and Navajo be present at their trial as witnesses. Navajo try white men. As spokesman for our council, I believe we shall obey Colonel Harlow. We go. Come on. Back to Fort Defiance. Let's go. Colonel Harlow, I have no case to sum up. The evidence against the defendants is too conclusive for a rebuttal, so they wish to throw themselves upon the mercy of this court. Captain O'Hara, will you bring me those fraudulent land title transfers? The discovery of these documents, bearing the thumbprints of Chief Wycomus, his daughter Okima, since deceased, and three of his sub-chiefs in possession of Connors following his capture, proves his participation, as well as Morgan, in these crimes of fraud and murder. I regret the crimes committed by these defendants are of such heinous nature that any mercy by this court shall be denied them. 
It is therefore the sentence of this court that the defendants, Ralph Connors and Jeb Morgan, shall be executed by a firing squad at dawn tomorrow. All right, come on. Good. White man law, fair to Navajo. Council proud. Nabo, I've recommended your appointment as Indian agent for this reservation. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Well, there it is. Wonderful, isn't it? Yes, but there's only one thing wrong. What's that? It should read Mr. and Mrs. That can easily be arranged. <laughs> 